So today's story is called The House That Never Stayed Home. So this house, it never stayed in one place. It never stayed home. And this story is by a writer called Anita Vacharajani. I liked spending my summer holidays with grandpa and grandma. So this child, he likes spending his summer holidays with his grandparents. They lived in an old house on top of a beautiful hill in Nainital. So, so they live in a mountainous region in Nainital. The house had a shiny red roof that glowed like a ruby in the sun. So you can see, this is actually quite a picturesque site. Picturesque means it resembles a painting. It's breathtaking, absolutely scenic and breathtaking. So this is what it looked like. The house on this mountain. It was a sight to behold and it glowed like a ruby. Now a ruby is a red precious stone. I'm sure you're aware of this. So um, let's continue. It was full of little corners and nooks where I could hide when grandma wanted me to finish my holiday homework. So this child, like all of us, enjoys procrastinating. So when you procrastinate, you delay doing something. So this child says that this house is full of corners and nooks. A nook is also a small corner where you can hide. So this child would go and hide when grandma wanted the child to finish the homework. Every evening, grandpa would sit on the swing outside with a plate full of mangoes. So the grandpa is going, it would sit and savor a plate of mangoes as we were doing during summer. I would sit by him listening to his stories about the trees and the mountains. So in the same way that all of you are sitting and listening to my stories, this child too would sit and listen to the grandpa's stories. Grandpa had a big round tummy and a large moustache which curled up. So he had a big round tummy, big round. Another word is protuberant. So it would bulge outwards, it would stick out the tummy. So he had a big round tummy and a large moustache which curled upwards. One evening, I asked him, Grandpa, why is our house so high up on the hill? It looks like it might fall down. See, don't you think like the house might just topple downwards? So it looks like it might fall down at any moment. Grandpa ate a slice of mango and wiped the drops of yellow juice off his moustache. He said in his rumly way. Rumly is making this continuous low sound. He says, mm, it's a long story. So he says, it's a long story. And I'm going to tell you why this house is so high up on the hill. A story? Tell me, tell me. So this child is very eager, very keen, very enthusiastic to listen to the story. Long, long ago. When I was a boy, my mother and I lived in a little house in a village far away. So, please pay attention to my voice and my expressions while I narrate the story. That's very important. So, this, the grandfather is having, is enjoying a flashback and he talks about how his mother and he lived in a little house in a village that was very far away. Were you as small as me? I asked. Yes, I was just as small as you. One night, we woke up yearing a loud dabadum. It had rained so hard that a roof broke. So we had to find a new house to live in. So it rained torrentially. You learned this word in the vocabulary masterclass. So owing to the torrential rain, the roof broke. And they had to find a new house to live in. We saw an array of houses, tiny, massive, tall, short houses. But we didn't like any of them till we found this one. It stood outside the woods. It wasn't too big or small. So he says that they saw an array of houses. An array is an impressive display of houses, a variety of houses. And this house seemed just right. It was right outside the forest, the woods. 
It wasn't too big or too small. It didn't have a leaky roof or a creaky floor. So it wasn't dilapidated. This house wasn't run down. It wasn't in an, in an old terrible condition. It was in fact in a good condition. A dilapidated house is a ramshackle tumble down house. It had big bright windows and a warm wooden floor. We peeped in and saw that there was no one inside. So we took all our things and went right in. You like it too, don't you? Oh yes, Grandpa, I replied. So the grandpa, when he was a child and his mum, they just moved into the house because they liked the look of the house. So this is the picture of the grandpa regaling his granddaughter, sorry, his granddaughter with a story. Ah, oh, but you don't know the secret of this house. So this house has a secret. Let's find out. What secret? I asked. Hmm, listen, there was a little yard in front and our cow Gungu stood there munching grass all day. The woods had tall trees and I climbed them all. From the treetops, I could see tiny animals and people walking around in the village far away. We went to the village once a week and feasted on roasted peanuts. So the, grandpa, the grandfather is talking about the idyllic life. The, an idyllic life is a very peaceful, pleasant life that he led. And there was a little yard and there was a, a cow grazing in front and the woods had tall trees and he would, he would climb the trees when, when he was little and um, he would go to the village once in a while to roast on the peanuts. Grandpa's eyes looked dreamy. So while he was enjoying this flashback, his eyes looked dreamy, like he was daydreaming, like he was in a reverie. When you are when you are enjoying a reverie or enjoying a daydream, you're in a world of your own. Your head is in the clouds, like he was going to fall asleep. So I popped a finger in his stomach and said, Grandpa, what happened then? Grandpa smiled down at me and replied, Oh, mm, yes, about a week later, I woke up one morning and looked out of the window to check if Gungu was all right. Gungu was the cow. I did that every day. What do you think I saw? What do you think the grandpa saw when he looked out of the window? Gungu, the child says, obviously you saw Gungu. Who else would you see? You saw your cow. No Gangu, just lots of camels and there were no trees around us. Remember they were just outside the woods and suddenly there were no trees. Just lots of sand. I woke Amma up and we ran out of the door looking for Gangu. So you can imagine how shocked they were, how astounded they were, how astonished they were. Because they weren't in their original location. A warm breeze blew and we had sand in our ears, noses and eyes. There were lots of brightly dressed people around us with camels and tents. We were in a desert. So they've gone from being in a forest to being in a desert. How did that happen? How had we got there? Some people stood outside our gate. They were surprised to see us too. So we, of course, were absolutely astonished. We were amazed. We were flabbergasted. How were we here in this desert? And even these people who saw us, they were absolutely confounded. When you're confounded, you're confused and amazed. They're wondering, where did these people come from? Our house had appeared like magic that morning. So it felt like the house had teleported from the woods to the desert. Yes, yeah, so when you teleport, you, you disappear from one place and reappear in another. And what did you do then? Well, Amma was sad about losing Gangu, but I was happy 
because I had new friends to play with. So this is where they were right now in this desert. They were here. So the house had appeared like magic in this desert. So um, Amma was very sad. His mother was very sad about losing the cow. Where would they get milk from now? But grandpa is very happy. Young grandpa, of course, because he had new friends to play with. He was going to befriend new people. When you befriend new people, you make friends with them. The children taught me some great games. We ate dates and ran on the sand dunes all day. So the grandpa is obviously over the moon. He is in, he is on cloud nine. He's in seventh heaven. He's absolutely euphoric. He's overjoyed. He's ecstatic. Because now he has a whole new place uh, and he has new friends. So they ate dates. So I'm sure you've eaten dates. Um, they kind of resemble cockroaches, but they're delectable. They look like this, like wrinkled cockroaches. Ew. But um, they taste scrumptious. So uh, the kids ate dates and they ran on sand dunes all day. A sand dune is a hill of sand. So um, this is a sand dune that you see here. That's a sand dune. Um, Amma made friends with the women. So his Amma befriended the women over there at the desert. They taught her how to make wonderful buttermilk. All our clothes were winter woolies, so we got hot and itchy until the women gave us some of their colorful clothes to wear. So uh, if you remember, the, the people were dressed in very bright, vibrant clothing. And they were dressed in clothing that was suited to the forest where it was cold. So they had winter woolies. Woolies are woolens made of wool. And uh, so they got new clothes from these people because they got hot and itchy, itchy, scratchy. Did you stay there forever? So this innocent little child is saying, did you stay there in this desert forever? Well, some days later, we woke up smelling something in the air, like rotting fish. So it smelled putrid. When they woke up, it smelled like rotting fish. Ugh. Putrid, it means it smells like something is decomposing. Something is rotting. It smells malodorous. You would puke, you would vomit if you smell this. Ugh. We could hear a loud whoosh, whoosh sound. We ran and looked out of the window. And what do you think we saw? What do you think they saw now? Camels? So the child guesses, did you see camels now? No, just lots and lots of water and some tall coconut trees. I ran out of the house. So this child sprinted out of the house. He darted out of the house. Because where were they now? We were on an island in the sea. Ooh, what did Amma say to that? So now the child is intrigued. Now this house has traveled to an island. Amma was very sad. She hated the fishy smell. So Amma was gloomy. She was glum. She was down in the dumps. She was absolutely crestfallen, miserable and doleful. Because she hated the fishy smell. Who wouldn't? It smelled absolutely putrid, malodorous. And all around us, women were drying fish. Now, if you've been past a fish market, you know precisely how it smells. We were frightened too. Because our house kept dashing around like that. Dashing is rushing and racing around like that. Once it's in a forest, then it's in a desert. Now it's on an island. What's happening? Such a mystery. And I missed my friends. You remember he had befriended a lot of children at the desert. And now he's missing his friends. But I made some more on the island. And we played in the water all day. Now, before we continue, I'd like to draw your attention to a special word. Now, this house is traveling a lot, as you must have noticed. So, when you travel a lot, when you have a traveling lifestyle, which none of us do now, let's face it, because of coronavirus, 
So um, if you have a lifestyle where you travel a lot because of work or something else, you have a peripatetic lifestyle. I'm going to repeat this word for you. Peripatetic. I want all of you to remember this word. Peripatetic. When you, when you are a peripatetic person or you have a peripatetic lifestyle, you travel to different places. So this is a peripatetic house. All right. So remember that word peripatetic. That means traveling or moving to different places all the time. So uh, someone asked me, what is the meaning of gloomy? Gloomy is sad very sad, down in the dumps, glum, crestfallen, doleful, miserable. All right. So this now let's go back to what the grandfather was up to on the island. I learned how to swim and catch fish. Remember, he was a child. He really enjoyed traveling. He enjoyed befriending new people. Yes, that's correct. Peripatetic. There were turtles and multi-hued seashells everywhere. So there were turtles everywhere. There were multi-hued seashells everywhere. Multi-hued is multicolored. So this is a glimpse of something from the island. That's what it looked like. All right. It was fun to lie on the sand to listen to the whoosh of the bright blue sea and to watch the clouds float by. I found Amma coconuts and birds eggs to eat because she didn't like fish. Remember, she found the fish, the smell of the fish to be putrid. So he would go and find birds eggs and coconuts for her. At night, the children slept on the beach. But I had to stay indoors because Amma was scared the house would run off again. So uh, this child would enjoy leisurely activities. So a leisurely activity is something you enjoy is when you are not working. When you do something at leisure, you're not working, you're, you're absolutely relaxed. Um, so, but the rest of the children would stay on the island. They would, they would sleep on the island, but they would sleep on the beach. But Amma, his mom would make him sleep inside the house because they had to guard the house. They were afraid the house would run off again because remember, it is a peripatetic house. When you are peripatetic or you have a peripatetic lifestyle, it means you travel around a lot. To be friend, someone asked me, is to make friends with someone. All right. Did you stay there forever? So the child asked again, did you stay on this island forever? Where did you stay? Well, I tried to. When Amma wasn't looking, I went to each wall of the house and whispered to it that we could stay on the island forever. So the grandpa is so in love with the island that he, that he hopes that they would stay on the island forever and enjoy this idyllic life, this pleasant, relaxed, beautiful life. But what do you think happened? Grandpa stopped to eat another piece of mango. He ate slowly. He ate at a leisurely pace, very slowly, in a relaxed manner. I got impatient. Impatient is restless. Grandpa, don't stop now. Tell me, where did you go next? He wiped his moustache and said, Three or four days later, I woke up one morning, hearing a loud clackety clack. I looked at Amma and saw that her teeth were chattering. So her teeth were chattering, clicking repeatedly. Because when it's very cold or when you're scared, your teeth chatter, you go... So he heard this clackety clack and it was loud. I tried to say something, but I could only hear more clackety clacking. My teeth were chattering too. So when he wasn't able to speak because it was so cold, it was frigid. The word for this is frigid. Frigid is bitterly cold, extremely cold. It was freezing cold. We shivered and huddled together under our blankets. So they shivered, they quivered, they were trembling because of the cold. Where were you, Grandpa? At the North Pole? So now this child is intrigued. Where have they come now? Where has this peripatetic house, this traveling house come now? So this looks like the place they were at now, this frigid place, bitterly cold. 
I don't know. A chill blew in snowflakes in through cracks in the door. So there were little cracks in the door and snowflakes blew in. We were ravenous and cold. So ravenous is hungry, starving, famished. They had nothing to eat. So they were ravenous. Ravenous is hungry, starving and famished. And then the child is, is wondering what happened next. Suddenly we heard a loud dudum. So this is an example of onomatopoeia, a sound word. A window flew in and the snow rushed right in. An old woman pushed her head in through the snow and smiled at us. So they are in the middle of nowhere and an old woman has entered their house. That is so weird. Don't you think so? So an old woman. So she is an old woman, an elderly woman, an aged woman. She's wrinkled. So another word is wizened. When you are wrinkled with age, you are wizened. So um, let's continue. An old woman pushed her head in through the snow and smiled at us. Then the rest of her climbed in. She was plump and short. So when you're plump and short, you are dumpy. Plump and short means dumpy. The word for it is dumpy. So she was a dumpy woman. I'm going to show you a picture in a bit. She was plump and short with a large broomstick in her hand. Her bright red hair was tied up in little plaits with yellow ribbons. Plaits are braids. The way you tie your hair when you go to school. I'm going to show you a picture. Behind her, we could only see snow. Everything was shiny white. So it seemed like there was a blanket of snow on everything they saw. So this was an old elderly wizened woman. She was dumpy. She was short and fat. And she's carrying a broomstick in her hand. You see, that's the kind of broomstick that we used to sweep houses. And her hair, her hair is very odd. Look at her hair, it's so peculiar, so bizarre, so weird, right? Her hair is in three plaits or braids. So, uh, Anaisha, you've asked me the meaning of peripatetic a few times. Peripatetic, when you are peripatetic, you travel a lot. So this house is a peripatetic house because it travels a lot. Okay, so this, let's go back to the story. So this, this old woman, this wrinkled, aged, wizened woman has entered their house. She's also short and fat. She's dumpy. She is dressed in an odd manner. Uh, let's continue. Who, who are you? Asked Amma. So Amma is flabbergasted. She's shocked. She's astounded. She's confounded. What is happening? Where did this lady come from? They're in the middle of nowhere. But the old woman just stood there huffing and puffing. She's going, <sighs> she's exhausted. She's fatigued. She's tired, right? <sighs> I'm Balubai, she replied when she at last caught her breath. So she, she says her name is Balubai. I'm a witch. A witch is here. What's happening? So the child asks, weren't you scared, Grandpa? So the child thinks obviously the grandpa must be scared, must be frightened and terrified. Yes, I was. I'd heard that witches ate little boys. So I ran and hid behind a chair. So grandpa quickly hides because he heard that witches consume little boys. Balobai says, I used to live in this naughty little house till it ran away one day. So this used to be Balobai's house. So this lady says, I'm Balobai. This used to be my house, this house that you're living in. And this used to be my house till it ran away. This peripatetic house ran away. So she calls this house naughty. When you're naughty, you are not well behaved. You're disobedient. You don't listen to your parents or your elders. Um, Ooh, said Amma. I knew there was something wrong with this house. So grandpa's mother says, I knew there was something wrong with this house. It's taken us all over the world. It is a troublesome house. It's given me so much trouble. One day we're in the forest, then we're in the desert, then we're on an island, and now we are in this godforsaken place. Balobai whispered, yes, 
and I've come to tell you the secret of this house. Amma whispered back, what secret? She says, what secret is there? You see, said Ballo Bai looking around, this house can fly and it doesn't like to stay home. So this peripatetic house can fly. If you remember the, the picture I showed you some time ago, um, the one with camels, you would see that this house is flying. So this peripatetic house can fly and it doesn't like to stay home. So this is the flying house. Another picture for you. So this, this, is a, this is a picture of a peripatetic house. Anaisha, I hope you're watching this. It's traveling from place to place. Yes, said Amma, nodding her, her head eagerly. We know that, but how does it fly? So Amma says, of course we know it doesn't stay in one place. We've been all over the world. So she's nodding her head eagerly. When you're eager, you're very keen to do something. You're very enthusiastic to do, to do something or to know something in this case. So Amma is very eager to know how this house can fly. How does this house have this power to fly? Ballo by side. Huh. I have to fly around the world a lot because I'm a witch and my work takes me to many places. So she is a peripatetic witch. She too travels to many places. But I hate flying on my broomstick because it gets so cold. So she doesn't like these bitterly cold temperatures. She doesn't like th this frigid temperature. So I cast a spell on this house and when I wanted to go somewhere, it would fly there. So she bewitched the house. To bewitch is to cast a spell on. So she cast a spell on the house because whenever she wanted to go somewhere, she would ensure the house flew there. She didn't want to fly on that broomstick of hers. And remember, she had a very odd broomstick. She had the kind of broom that you sweep houses with. So she didn't want to travel on this broomstick. That's not a very usual uh, witch's broomstick. Uh, yes, they got a world tour for free. Someone is saying that true. Okay, let's continue. And then the house flew in, flew away from you, said Amma. So grandfather's, grandpa's mom is saying the house flew away from you. Oh yes, said Ballo Bai. One morning when I was out, it flew off on its own. So remember, this is a naughty, misbehaved, disobedient house. And it flew away on its own. So the witch was out and the house went. So I had to find myself another house. How did you find us? I asked, coming out slowly from behind the chair. So grandpa, who was a little boy at the time, remember he's hiding. So he comes out from his hiding place, from the nook that he is hiding in. Remember the nook is a small corner. And he asks the witch, how did you find us? He realizes that, he realizes that this witch is not going to eat him. Balobai said, last night as I was flying across the sky, I saw this house dashing by. So this house is traveling somewhere in a great hurry. It's rushing, it's racing and she, she saw the house. She caught sight of the house. So I followed it here. So she was very, she too was very keen and eager to know who is living in this house and what has happened to her old house. So now she's followed the house to this place where it's very cold. Uh, said Amma. Now Amma is feeling very embarrassed. You remember they, they decided to stay this house. They inhabited this house without even checking if someone lived there or if it belonged to someone. They just liked the house and they moved in. So Amma is feeling very embarrassed. She's feeling very uncomfortable and uneasy. I mean, wouldn't you if someone caught you in their house? So she says, uh, we didn't know it was your house. You can have it back. She says, oh, take your house. It's given us enough trouble. And we're sorry we were staying here without your permission. No, thank you, said Balobai, shaking her head so hard that her plaits flew around her head. Remember, she had three plaits. So she shakes her head so hard that these three plaits move around her head. And she says, oh, no, no, I don't want this house. You keep it. I have a new house that's not naughty at all. She says, this new, my new house is not misbehaved, is not disobedient. It listens to every order. I just came to help you. I came to lend you a helping hand. To help you. Well, we like the house, but 
But how do we make it stay still? Amma asked. So Amma says, we are, we are genuinely enjoying the interiors of the house, the inside of the house. But how can we make it stay in one place, stay still, stay motionless without moving? Ballobai replied, I could take you and the house back to Nainital where I live these days. So she says that I live in Nainital. So Nainital is in Uttarakhand, in India. I'm sure many of you have been to Nainital. It is quite the picturesque place. Uh, picturesque, remember I told you, it resembles a painting. Picturesque is scenic. It's a breathtaking place. Absolutely spectacular to look at. Um, I'll keep an eye on it. It won't run away with me watching it all day. So she says that I live in Nainital and I could take you and the house back to this mountainous region. This picturesque mountainous region. And I'll keep an eye on your house and it won't run away with me watching your house. Keeping an eye on your house. Oh, thank you, said Amma. So Amma says, oh, thank you, thank you. Please help us. She doesn't want to travel anymore to islands and deserts or uh, to frigid places like this. Then Balobai asked Amma for a long, strong rope. She tied one end of the rope to her broomstick, to her bizarre little broomstick and wound the rest around the house. So she takes the rope and she wraps the rest around the house. We sat on the bed holding on for dear life. So we're holding on tightly, hoping we won't fall off now that we are flying elsewhere. Balobai got onto her broom and yelled, All set? Yes! We called out. So we are petrified. We are terrified. We don't know what's going to happen. So they said, yes, okay, take us. And then with a, with a mighty whoop, so it made this sound. Balobai took off into the air. So when Balobai, she took off into the air with a broomstick, this sound was a whoop. And behind her, the house was pulled up and away into the sky. Swoosh, we went over trees and hills and seas. We flew past birds and right through clouds and landed here on this beautiful hill, on this breathtaking, awe-inspiring hill. So they saw all these magnificent sights, trees, hills, seas. I think the house liked Nerithal so much, it never flew off again. When Grandpa finished his story, he leaned back, he sat back and ate another slice of mango. I just stared at him. A flying house. Why? We could go anywhere in the world. Now they have a peripatetic house. They could go, go anywhere in the world. Grandpa, I whispered, can the house still fly? Oh, I don't know. Why don't you find out? said Grandpa with a twinkle in his eye. When you have a twinkle in your eye, it means that that's a friendly and happy expression, yes, but it also means you have secret knowledge about something. So he has a twinkle in his eye because he has a secret. What's his secret? Let's find out. I spend the rest of the vacation showing the house pictures of the world from one of Grandpa's big old books. So they had books strewn all over the house and um, this child, this girl, she would go around showing pictures from the books to the house. I sat next to a different wall every day and told it all about the animals and trees and mountains of the world. So this child would sit down and try and tempt the house into leaving from Nenital and moving to another place. I even showed it pictures of the moon. So the, the child is now hoping that the house takes her to the moon. All right, so this is a picture of the child showing books and talking to the walls of the house. And she's showing the, 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 the walls, the pictures of the moon too. You see that? Every morning, I would rush to the window to see if we had landed in Timbuktu. So Timbuktu is a, it's a West, Western African city or at the North Pole or in the Thar Desert. So this child is hoping let's, you know, toward another place today. 
but the house never went anywhere. It just stayed home all day. So grandpa told me that this house was a peripatetic house, but this house didn't go anywhere. It just stayed home all day. Grandpa smiled and winked at me every time he saw me looking out the window. I wonder why. So every time the child would peek outside the window, grandpa would smile and wink at the child in a playful manner. And the child is wondering why is this happening? So, do you think the 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 grandpa was playing a trick on the child? Please let me know in the comments and I have one more thing to discuss with you. So please tell me uh, what do you think happened was the was the grandpa playing a trick on the child? Please tell me. You don't think that this was a made up story by the grandfather Ritesha says that. So maybe uh, the grandfather wanted to entertain the child or maybe now the house was actually stuck in one place because Ballo Bai was watching over it. What do you think? Um so sometimes I don't know if your grandparents have done this to you but a lot of times grandparents try and entertain you to keep you busy. So I'm guessing that's what the grandfather did. Uh, he realized that his granddaughter was getting bored in the house and didn't want to do her homework and so he decided to entertain her with this scintillating story. Uh but the most important question I want to ask you is now you can't travel anywhere because because of the current situation you're locked down at home and um wouldn't you love to have a peripatetic house so again peripatetic is when you travel so this is a peripatetic house a traveling house so um my question to you is and please let me know in the comments where would you go if you had a peripatetic house Where would you go if you had a peripatetic house? Where would you go if you had a traveling house?